It was in 1820 that Patrick and Maria Bronte and their six children first climbed the steep main street of Hearth in their horse and trap. And it is here that we must come if we're to understand the Brontes. We must see this village that they have put into their literature. We must see the mills and houses and absorb its gruff character. These are the Yorkshire Moors near Keithley, the area familiar known as the Bronte countryside. Bleak, desolate and windswept. These scenes were familiar to the Bronte family, who lived in nearby Hearth one and a half centuries ago, and were the inspiration of their novels. But the Bronte story begins on the outskirts of Bradford, the present-day city seen here from Thornton Heights, some 50 metres up. The Thornton of today contrasts sharply with that of yesteryear, yet the cobbles and stone houses have changed little since the Brontes walked these streets. The then main street of Thornton is narrow. And in a simple terraced house number 74, Patrick and Maria Bronte lived, and was the birthplace of their children. The house is small, having a tiny garden projecting onto the pavement, and five steps climbing up to the front door. A tablet tells us that here were born three sisters and their brother. Children who were to bring all the world to Hearth. Their parents, Maria and Patrick Bronte. Their daughters, Charlotte, Emily, Anne and brother Bramwell. Their father, Patrick, who was a clergyman, would have been impressed with Thornton's new church. All that is left of the one that he knew is part of a wall with a 15th century window and the lantern top of the old tower, which is now set up after lying in bits in the churchyard. The journey from Thornton to Hearth through a region of stone quarries has produced the stone which solidifies the cottages, provides the field walls and many a delightful packhorse bridge. These scenes are near Hartcastle Cracks. Some houses and factories were also built of millstone grit. Between these lonely moors and the busy valley down below stands Hearth, with its church, the parsonage and the inn clustering about the churchyard. Up this narrow street in April 1820 came Patrick Bronte with his Cornish wife, their six children and seven cartloads of furniture. They pass the Black Bull Inn. This scene being as it was in their day. At the top of the hill is the church of St. Michael and All Angels, which was to become Patrick's new parish of 4,000 inhabitants, who were chiefly weavers and farmers. My salary is only 200 pounds a year. 
No one has anything to do with the church but myself, and I have a large congregation. We come to the Bronte House up a stony little hill, which is no more than... A little and lone green lane that opened on a common wide. As Emily wrote, they arrived at the parsonage, and perhaps the children may have been thrilled by the sight of the moors about them. They have a touch of beauty when the heather is out. Behind their house at the parsonage, they would soon find the rough track they were to tread so often when they would escape to the moors and the tragedy of life. In one of the glens is a waterfall, known by their name today. By it, they would rest and tell tales to one another, long before they told them to the world. Close by the Bronte Falls is Stanbury, described by Emily as a distant, dreamy, dim blue chain of mountains circling every side. These mountains are the Pennine Moors of Weathering Heights. And this farm is thought to feature in her book of that name. The parsonage, a plain Georgian house of two stories, has become the Bronte Society's museum. A wrought iron sign near the entrance shows one of the literary trio. It could be Charlotte, Emily or Anne writing at a pedestal table. This gate, which admits visitors, once admitted the Bronte family and their friends. Crimson is the prevailing colour in the dining room, furnished by people of very moderate means. The picture above the mantelpiece is of Charlotte, and it was on this sofa that Emily died on December the 19th, 1848, at the age of 30. Opposite the dining room is the parlour, which was Mr. Bronte's study, and where he took his meals. On the table is his salter, pipe and tobacco jar. The cottage piano was used by Emily. A friend, Ellen Nussey, said, Emily, after some application, played with precision and brilliancy. Above the fireplace is a painting of the Last Judgment. This is all that remains of the kitchen, having suffered badly during alterations in 1872. An effort has been made to reconstruct the room where the girls learnt the important tasks of the household. At the bend on the staircase is the grandfather clock, which Mr. Bronte wound each evening before retiring. Opposite the clock is a portrait of the three sisters by their brother Branwell, a self-taught artist. Upstairs are some personal family effects. All these clothes were actually worn by the Bronte family. This watercolour, painted by Branwell, is a flossy, the family dark. In this room are several examples of Branwell's work in watercolour and oils. His father died here at the age of 85. Branwell also died here at the age of 31.
due to the purchase of drugs from this store. Charlotte, from the house, looked out onto the churchyard. A depressing spectacle, enclosed with iron railings, and described the view... A monotonous stretch of moorland, a grey church tower, rising from the centre of the churchyard, so filled with graves that the rank weeds and coarse grass scarce have room to shoot between the monuments. Only the tower is left of the church Patrick Bronte knew. These photographs are of the original, demolished in 1879. The present structure was consecrated in 1881. Its square tower, dark with age and storms, on weather-beaten stones surrounding the church, faded inscriptions record the passage of souls long dead, and there is hardly a strip of ground where one may tread without disturbing someone's sleep. Beyond this is the parsonage, curiously alive with the voices of a generation gone. This is the last letter Charlotte wrote to Ellen Nassi before she died in this room aged 38 after catching a heavy cold. In the parsonage, one feels the pathos of a gifted family's life. The personality of the three strange sisters who made this wild corner of Yorkshire a place of pilgrimage, as long as their books are read. Quotations were spoken by Dorothy Hines and Bruce Cayley. <laughs>